Never mind. Sorry. All, All right. right. There it is. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Off Camber Live. For those of us that are joining for the first time, this is a little bit of information about the show. The person hosting the live stream uh, is... I've already messed up. Let's start again. <laughs> for anyone new to the program, the Off Camber Live Show has been put together by some great people that all run their own YouTube channel. Each week, the show will be hosted on a different YouTube live stream. The speakers may change, and the topic is always about our favorite sport, mountain biking. My name is Joseph from Trail Features, and today on the show, we have Tony from MTB Drop. And Tony, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Hi, I'm Tony from... Uh... And to be dropping, um, basically, uh, my, my channel is about, it's a mountain biking channel, but I'm a mental health professional and I'm basically building a business to, um, to target people who suffer from trauma and PTSD and I'm combining mountain biking and therapy into one and it's, the channel is kind of like my journey and putting this thing together and building it. So, yeah. Outstanding. Next up, we were able to get one of the trail peak brothers to stay still for more than 30 seconds. We have Zach. From Trail Peak, Zach, go ahead and introduce yourself. What's going on, everyone? <laughs> Zach, uh, I guess our channel is all about shredding mountain bikes. Um, yeah. Awesome. Last but certainly not least, we have Paul from Paul the Punter. I'll go ahead and tell all the fine folks what you're all about. Uh, hello, fine folks. Uh, I certainly don't have as... Uh, as strong a message as uh, Tony over there, but uh, I kind of mess about on man bikes and try to put a video out once a week. And yeah, that's it. Outstanding. And uh, my channel for those who are new is Trail Features. And here I try to focus on just having fun uh, with uh, high-end camera gear, making cinematic uh, mountain biking adventures for you all to enjoy. So moving on to tonight's topic mountain bike memories we are gonna open up our our minds and try to come up with our best stories uh starting off what was either your first mountain bike or your first mountain bike experience tony go ahead and start us off first mountain bike um so my first mountain bike was a cannondale f700 from like 1990 eight or something like that. It was my dad's bike. And, um, I basically just wanted to go out, get, I, I love, uh, getting outdoors and everything like that. And basically everything in California sucks when it comes to outdoors in the sense that it's hard to find a good fishing spot. It's hard to find a good hunting spot. It's just difficult out here sometimes. And, um, I got on my dad's bike and headed out to some trails. I heard just 15 minutes, you know, the, the road. And I was completely just blown away at I found it. I can get outdoors like every day. Like, yeah. So if awesome. that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, how about yourself? Um, trying to think my first mountain bike. Uh, I think it was like a, some sort of Marin hardtail hand me down from a neighbor up the street, gave it to me, uh, beat the hell out of it. And yeah, I really just discovered a lot of the local trails. Um, all of our, me and my buddies would just go out and mess around, build jumps. Uh, yeah, I, it's I don't have a, like a first mountain bike memory, but just loads of just messing around with my friends and discovering the sport. So what was what was the first mountain bike that you decided to buy and like what what was it about it and this is not like the the getting onto the the tech geek stuff but like you know that that initial investment is always kind of a a, a big one yeah so which which was the first one uh, I think I think after that bike I bought a a specialized hard rock or something because the Marin was a twenty four inch so I grew out of that had to. Uh, move on to something better. So got a specialized hard rock and yeah, I've been on bikes ever since that. After that, I'd say like the first real, real mountain bike was a giant rain X two, I think. 
um, 160 travel bike. I was able to finally go up and ride North Star out here. North Star at Truckee Mountain Bike Park up there. Nice. All right, Paul. You're up next. What what was your first mountain bike experience or mountain bike? Well, my first, I kind of had lots of friends when I was growing up that had actual mountain bikes. I only had a BMX. So I pretty much <laughs> rode, rode uh, most of the mountain biking back in England uh, on my BMX. But then finally, in 2002, I got a Kona scab. And we had a shop downtown that did Kona bikes, and they were like the peak. There was nothing better than a Kona. If like you shouldn't even bother trying if you didn't have a Kona back then. So uh, <laughs> yeah, and I had that, and that was fully rigid. If anyone remembers, uh, and then for like the following birthday, I got some Z1 drop offs, which were the sickest. <laughs> I, rode, I rode. We rode everything, right? Like now, I've got a ridiculous bikes in comparison. If I could tell a uh, 15 year old Paul that this is what it was going to become, he'd be stoked. So uh, yeah, that was that was probably it. Like um, way back in the beginning. Awesome. So my first mountain bike was not a mountain bike. Um, I remember when I graduated up to like an actual bike, like with you know the derailleur shifters and everything. It didn't have the coaster brake and stuff. Um, it was a giant tank of a steel bike that my parents got from Walmart and it had, it was white and black with police written on it. And so I just thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing. Like I pretend to pull over my, my friends and, and my siblings. Um, but I remember the first time I went down, uh, we had this really steep swooping hill and I was just like, Oh, I'm going to ride this down this hill as fast as I can. And First off, uh, I failed miserably getting up it because I'm just like, why is it so hard to, and it's like in the hardest gear because I had no concept of shifters at that point. Uh, and I get it up to the top of the hill and I bomb down this hill and I, I try to coaster brake and I, that whipping action threw me off my bars and I just went OTB for the first time and landed in this big pile of, of rocky sand um so that was my first mountain bike and first mountain bike hey, experience what, what year was that joe oh god uh a while like i, I think that was coaster back... breaks, okay. that's uh that's turning back the clock yeah yeah no wait was it coaster? Break? what is when would you, you like back pedal yeah that that's coaster, coaster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no yeah, so yeah. like uh I was about to say i was like no i thought that was right um quizzing me on my bike terminology on this show but the uh no i i i think that was like when i was maybe like 10 or 11 if i if i had to like take a wild guess but i can tell you that after that my dad got really big into mountain biking and he got himself a cannondale super v 900 and he wanted to take uh yeah it was it was a beef bike um yeah. And he wanted to have us come along and you can't exactly have your kids ride around on a, a Walmart bike chasing a, a Cannondale full suspension. So he got me a 98 GT Ricochet and I <laughs> still hate the fact that I got rid of that frame because like I had it and it was before I got back into mountain biking again and it was just kicking around. I was like, oh, I don't need this. And I just got rid of it. And it, it pains me today because I would have loved to have it on the wall. That would have yeah. been sick. Does that uh, does anyone actually have their first ever bike? Because I see, so you see so many pros, don't you? Like go, oh, and this was my first ever bike. I'm like, how did you have that? Like you sell that immediately to pay for the next one. I still <laughs> have mine actually. That the Canon no <laughs> Hold on to it. <laughs> don't get rid of it. I just put it on Craigslist. I'm like, I need, I need money. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll, re you'll regret it. Like it, maybe it'll take like a couple of years, but you'll always look back at your first bike and be like, Oh, I had so much fun on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of having tons of fun, what was the best trail you've ridden? Not because like the technical features, stuff like that, just the fun factor that you had. And it doesn't even need to be like a world famous trail. Uh, so I'll, I'll kick off with Paul uh, moving, um, moving the, uh, the storytelling. Just, along. Uh, just refilling. I've got, uh, everyone's got no. like, <laughs> it's live yeah so we don't this have is, time 
Yeah, this is uh, this is this drink tank thing, right? It's filled with the local brewery here in Squamish. I just went and picked it up pre-show, but maybe I can maybe I can multitask. But we've got a nice maybe. little pair. I, I, I can I can go first. Uh, on. All right. So uh, my favorite trail is the the first trail that I actually learned to ride a mountain bike, and it was a non unofficial one. It was just at the at the base of the hill that I lived on. There was a lake, and there was these you know just trails that were strung along all of it. And, and most of these were, were foot trails because back in the day, you know, mountain biking was still taking off. This was like, you know, I, I was riding on a 98 GT ricochet. So there's your timing. Uh, and I would go and just spend hours learning how to get over roots, rocks and stuff like that. And I was actually starting to get pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately we, like after a few years, we moved away from that town and I moved to Colorado and I had just turned 16 and I was all angsty because I was mad that we moved and we had gone from sea level basically to 6,000 feet in Colorado. And I tried to take my bike out and like the wind just got sucked out of me because I had been playing video games for like the past year, not really riding my bike. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, this sucks. And I just threw my bike in the garage and never touched it for years after that while living in Colorado. Yes, you all can. Yeah, I was about to say, man, you must really I regret, regret all my life choices. <laughs> where where in Colorado was that? Colorado Springs. So I basically okay. was right in the middle of it. I could have driven up to Boulder. I could have made a road trip to Fruta. Could have gone to Moab, Arizona, just Tons right there. Man, I, I'm gonna... I was young and stupid. <laughs> All right, Paul, have you finished oh, yeah. filling your beverage? I'm in. Fully All full. right, go for so, it. Take us on a journey. My, oh, my favorite trail. I've been pretty fortunate, obviously, to ride quite a lot. Like, uh, you know, the memorable ones are things like Champry. The first time I went down that in uh, 2000, 2013. I mean, I didn't really ride it properly. <laughs> like, that was the scariest day, I'm pretty sure, of my life. That was nuts. I mean, nowadays, like, I remember I lived in uh, Morzine, which is just a couple of valleys over from Champery, and people would go on, like, trail rides and go and do it, like, in just, like, normal helmets. Like, everyone's seen that Danny Hart run, but it's, like, it's that's just how mountain biking's changed, right? People just wear, put some knee pads on and a trail helmet and go and do that. But uh, I think my favorite of all time was when I was in New Zealand and I, I was living in Queenstown and there's this trail called Corotan. So if, uh, if anyone has seen Follow Me, uh, there's an amazing section there with Stevie Smith and G. Atherton and that's on Coronet Peak. So you kind of go, you go up there and there's another town over, which is called Arrowtown. That's Coronet Peak, Arrowtown, Corotan. And you go, and Arrowtown actually is like this old gold mining place. So you go there and it's like a wild, wild west, like film set. And that's just what the town is. So you start, you pedal all the way up Coronet Peak and you just go down and like, there's this huge, yeah, the view is insane. And the trail, they re, they re uh, did it at the, like the, they redid the last bit to slow people down. But this trail just went faster and faster and faster and steeper and steeper as you got down and then it just finished with this big shoot and you kind of fly up the other side and that oh the first first few times i read that i did it like three times a week when it first like started coming out and like there was, there was barely any trail there you just bushwhacked through like these you know like the things you see on rude rock videos like you just went down there apparently now there's just this huge big rut all the way down from people oh, from people riding it but Oh yeah, without doubt, Corridown is probably my favorite trail. Easy, nice. Tony, how about you? So, are we talking about the feeling, or are we talking about just like epic view, the whole experience? You're saying, right? Kind of like you know, what's the one that like you 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 remember the most? Like the one that just like you sit there and you're like, man, that was such a fun day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, now that makes it easier. The one that I remember the most. So, um. One of the curses that I have in life is like, I don't know how to have fun. You know, I, I like, I had, there has to be like purpose to every come to my next party. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to have purpose in everything I do. So like one of the most fulfilling like times, I just remember feeling like it was a huge accomplishment and just what the views that I saw and just the whole experience was just like, 
wow, it was perfect. You know, you just started. All right, so basically, let me get to it without taking too much time. So I was trying to ride with BKXE for the longest time, and uh, he, he was going to come out here and do one of my trails, uh, the San Juan downhill. And um, I had ended up two days or three days or something like that before I was supposed to go out there and ride with them. I separated my AC joint for the very first time. So I was into the club there. Um, so what, basically, we, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just told him, dude, you know, give me a call next time. You know, I'll give you a call, see where you are, see if it works out. So I ended up calling him about maybe two months later. And he said he was going to be in St. Louis Obispo, which is like six, seven hours like away from me. So if I was going to like make this happen, I had to finish all my, all my finals were due that day. I had to finish all my finals that one day, all my paperwork for like my, my kids at work and everything like that. And I literally got all that stuff done, went to bed, got three hours sleep, woke up, made a beeline at three in the morning to St. Louis Obispo to meet him around like 10 or something like that. I got there and just, I hadn't been riding for like a week. It was finals that week. And I'm going riding with, you know, Brian, who's like freaking Terminator. You know, if you really see him in real life, dude, his veins are just like, the dude is huge, you know? And um, so I get out there and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm just like, all right, here we go, you know? And so I go up there and they totally killed me. You know, they, and, you know, they like waited for me. They were really cool and everything like that. And uh, um. I just remember as I was dying, just feeling like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? I feel like I don't even feel good. I just looked up and in St. Louis Obispo, like if you, when you're going up the mountain and coming down, you can look to your left or right and you see the ocean, you know? And it's just like, I remember thinking to myself, wow, I made some, you know, it's just crazy. Just, I was just finishing my finals three hours, you know what I mean? Like that day before, and now I'm here. You know what I mean? Following this, I will, you know, to me at that time, Brian from BKXC is like, you know, that's like, oh, starstruck. You know, I've watched so many of his YouTube videos, been following him for a while. So I'm like, how did I get here? You know what I mean? And um, basically made it through the ride, got down, went out to eat after. And then we went to, I guess, the slime factory out there. And Brian got me like this VIP pass to go and back and look at the factory and, you know, kind of be in his video a little bit. And I just remember getting in my car at the end, just so tired going, <laughs> this is going to be one of the most relaxing eight hour drives home I've ever had just because I felt so just like fulfilled and just like what just happened right now, you know? So to me, that experience, like I'll, I'll never forget that, you know, it was just a, an amazing day. So nice. Did you go down, uh, trying to think, did you hit boundary trail or Trying to think what the other ones out there are. Manzanita. I was so tired, dude. I couldn't tell you what I got <laughs> I didn't remember. Yeah, I remember. I, names, nothing. You know, I just, yeah, I, I was like, he gave me the pin. Like, I got to the pin. pin. We got back got down and we left. <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah, it's on, it's on YouTube. I have the video. So, I mean, you can take a look at yeah. it. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, you should. I, I love riding in San Luis Obispo. You should definitely get back out there. Oh. Lots of good stuff. It was awesome, dude. It was, and I will, I want to take like when my wife gets better and done rehabbing, I want to take her, maybe just us go make a beeline out there and just have her experience what I experienced that day. And uh, she will love it. So that's awesome. I'm, you know, I'm terrified of like Brian coming down to Austin. He's like, yeah, show me deception. Show me all this awesome stuff. And I'm going to be like, cool, let's go. And then just left in the dust, gasping for air. Just like, well, uh, here, here's a trail map. You go, you go e explore. So I, uh, I hopefully will also have a good experience like you did with Brian. Uh, Brian's so, a cool dude, man. You can't not, not have a good time with Brian, man. He's I know. A really good I, guy, man. I was, I was very surprised, you know, just, you know, you, you always wonder with YouTube, are they going to be like they are on camera, you know, but yeah. yeah, totally. Brian was definitely, he's a cool dude no complaints from anyone that i've ever heard <laughs> nice yeah he's just stoked to be on the bike period at all yeah. <laughs> uh no from breaks is also worried about brian coming down here and just destroying just destroying both of us <laughs> just like at the end of the week we're just going to be like dead youtube <laughs> channel canceled that's 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 how he's doing it he's going to go around and just weed out the weeks and just like get rid of all the competition <laughs> <laughs> uh all right so zach 
Zach, what was your, your favorite trail memory? Like what was the trail that you just had so much fun on that day? Um, so I think, I think if I had to say most fun, um, it's either gotta be something like one of my first times riding Santa Cruz, the, uh, the UC trails, campus trails, probably be some of the most fun riding I've ever done. Just blown away by, by the riding down there and the dirt, um, just steeper riding jumps everywhere. Really good dirt, really scenic forest or, or first time riding the TDS property up in Nevada city, another super awesome place. Just rats nests of trails everywhere. You're going fast jumps everywhere. Nice. Uh, How'd you find out about, uh, about those trail systems was like someone taking you along for the ride, kind of showing you showing the, the ropes or did you just hear about it? Um, you just hear about it. Well, like the Santa Cruz stuff, people, people try to say that they're secret. Honestly, that's just a joke. Um, <laughs> the most popular secret trails in the world, as I like to say. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're legendary trails. You go down there and ask somebody to go ride. They're going to take you out to campus. Um, yeah. How, uh, how uh, TDS TDS is like friend of a friend, um, private ranch part, private ranch riding, but what were you gonna say? Oh, it was just like I heard. I went to when I was at Sea Otter this year. I heard like I, heard, I didn't have any idea how sketchy it was to actually ride in Santa Cruz. Is it like as bad as I've heard, where like rangers will come up to you and find you and like just put the hammer down? <laughs> uh, no, that's more like Marin. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that that doesn't happen too often in Santa Cruz. I mean, I don't live down there, but. I've never really heard of too many people getting tickets. It does happen, but rarely. Nice. So my, my favorite trail is, uh, one that is basically nestled behind my apartments. It's kind of abandoned trails. Uh, I have a lot of memories attached to unofficial trails apparently, but essentially when I moved to Austin, I was trying to like get back in shape because I was just like, ah, yeah, you know, new life, new city, new job. I'm going to go nuts. So I went out, I got a personal trainer and I did the whole nine yards and I wrecked my back like L4, L5, S1, all compressed, pinched nerve, whole left leg went numb. Yeah. I was basically like down for the count for like a year, took a lot mm -hmm. of solid uh, PT and like a lot of you know, emotional therapy for myself to like, you know, make sure that I'm kind of saying like, I'm just going to get through this. It's going to be okay. And, you know, I, that was actually how I started getting into like watching, uh, YouTube again. And at first I was watching like gaming stuff, but then I started seeing like the mountain biking stuff and I started watching that and I was like, Oh, this is pretty cool. And I was asking my doctor, I was like, Hey, I need to like, I got, I got to get out of my head. I'm stuck here in the apartment. I, I come home from work and I'm done. And, uh, he was like, well, you, you need to make sure it's a low impact sport. It's like, well, what's, well, what's a low impact sport? Like, can I do riding? And he's like, yeah, you know, do riding. So, uh, the first trail I went on was this little, like just foot trail. And it was just this little path behind my apartments. And it was nothing serious. Like the most technical feature was like a tree, maybe that big around, <laughs> but like I wrote it and I was waiting for the sciatica to like kick in and like my back to like give out. And I was just going to have to like figure out a ride, like call, call a friend to come get me. But like, I kept riding and my back didn't hurt and I kept riding and my back didn't hurt. And I was just like, I, I have something again because I grew up mountain biking. So like for me, it was like this really big reconnection to it. I was like, oh, this is so awesome. Uh, and like I basically rode, I think like five miles a day. I was completely gassed the next day. But 
just being able to like get my freedom back was so awesome that that like hooked me back into mountain biking and it became that that ever endeavor of like moving on to bigger and bigger features and outgrowing bikes and getting better and better and better and so i still remember that trail because that was the moment where i finally just like the dark clouds went away which was ironic because it was actually a very moody day it was like overcast and it like was sprinkling but so Music much fun <laughs> so much fun all right so moving right along in, in in the in the spirit of always moving forward what was what was the milestone or one of the milestones that like in your biking career you look back on because you were just so proud of hitting that moment where you're like yes like you clean that feature or you finish that trail or you got that pr so uh tony let's go ahead and start off <clears throat> all right so actually <clears throat> i'm kind of like in that phase right now um i've only been riding for probably a little over a year and a half now um so i i used to be a musician so i know all about coordination and like getting like there's just specific things that you need to be your body needs to become like with my fingers needed to become one with the guitar i needed to do it without thinking and i knew it i've been knowing all these technique things on how to go into a berm how to turn how to use your hips to turn i know all these things logically but i feel like i'm at a phase now where things are just happening instinctually like i'm noticing all my prs going up right now um i'm starting to understand how to jump now like now i know how to push into a jump to actually make the bike come up with me and not you know feel like i'm locked in a position and i'm gonna go fall off on the other side so i'm like having a lot of fun just like right now just the other day i went there was this uh on one of my favorite trails out here called distortion and it's just it sends you out super fast and then it like comes up a little bit and it's just like a drop down and there's actually like this little you actually have to get over this like uh it's 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 it drops down but then you don't want to land in like there's a pit you know what i mean so you got to jump over the pit thing so i've never been able to really clear it so i just like i went pushed it and i just sent it right over it and I literally remember thinking to myself just the other, it was two days ago. And I was like, I've literally went higher in the air with my mountain bike right now than I ever have ever, <laughs> you know? And it's like, <laughs> um, it's like, I feel like I'm in that, that phase right now where it's just like, things are clicking. It's, you know, getting to that point where it's just like, my body just does it, you know? Um, so it's, you know, I got a lot, a lot of work to do, but like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, I'm in that time and excited to get out every day at this point. Awesome. Zach, you you you've had uh, many people comment on on your abilities, but you obviously had to practice a lot to get there. So, like looking back, like what's kind of like some of the big milestones where you're like, oh man, awesome. Yeah, um, I think one of the most notable kind of like breakthrough rides I've done was. When I first rode Mr. Toads in South Lake Tahoe, aka Saxon Creek Trail, <clears throat> um, went with one of my neighbors. Uh, first time riding in Tahoe, I was on a 26 inch stump jumper FSR. And uh, Mr. Toads is like a, I don't know, 16 mile loop or something, 3,000 feet of climbing probably a little bit more but you're at like 10,000 feet or you get up to 10,000 feet so we're on this ride um going along feel pretty good i'm handling the elevation handling the the uh the endurance and i flatted somewhere on the climb had a camel back on but classic kook move it was just full of water. Didn't really have any tools or tubes or anything. Um, the guy I was riding with was on a 29er. He had a 29er tube, but um, I don't know. He, I don't know. We just didn't really, didn't really try putting it. Maybe he didn't have a tube. I don't it know. Does, it doesn't matter. It does work. It doesn't, it does work. doesn't matter. It does work. I was, I wasn't yeah. self-sufficient, and luckily some guys come by. They had a 26-inch tube, so they gave that to me um kept on riding and i don't know i just noticed how annoyed 
my neighbor was the guy I was riding with by the fact that like I just had water in my camelback uh no tools no tubes no food or anything really <laughs> and so from that point on I, I really learned like you gotta be self-sufficient you can't just be this oh, guy yeah. that mooches <laughs> off of people like I got so lucky that these dudes had a tube with them um i think that's what it was i think my friend gave me a tube and i popped that one too so we are out <laughs> of tubes or something like that anyway yeah i really learned that i needed to be self-sufficient uh we're deep in the backcountry i could have just been on a big old hike for the next eight miles or so and yeah that would have been stupid and anyway keep on riding and i was blown away by the trail that day as well just first time riding something seriously technical um uh, mr toads is probably one of the gnarlier trails in tahoe it actually has some like rocks and some good some good chunk to it um i have so seen I think many many youtube videos on on mr toad and one of these days i'll have to write it just to see it how just ridiculous it is in real life it's, it's not that ridiculous but it's just out of anything in tahoe it's probably the gnarliest like a lot of stuff in Tar tahoe can be kind of flatter more mellow um i guess in my opinion but mr toads stands out ab above everything else as something that's still still a little challenging was it you that rode portal on your youtube channel i believe i saw that i'm not yeah portal and that was that was dane that was dane okay I wanted you to speak to that because I'm like that just oh my gosh it freaked me out watching it. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to need to go hit that one maybe this spring. Um, but yeah, I think I think that would be one of the more notable breakthrough rides. Other than that, maybe maybe riding Mount Elbert in um, Colorado, tallest peak. Oh, geez. In Colorado. That was just such a that was just such a tough ride for me, uh, like physically and mentally, and but also just one of the sickest descents I've ever done. Um, Sounds like one of those things like you just wake up and like you know I really hate myself today. I think I'm just gonna go climb the biggest thing that I can and just hurdle myself on the other side. See what happens. Let's make it an adventure. It, I I fully encourage anyone to go try that ride. <laughs> Try getting up to 13,000 feet with your bike um, and then wrap your head around getting up another 1,500 feet. It's tough. It, it'll beat the hell out of you. It's, it's insane. Um, How but, but it's worth it. That's, that's seriously one of the sickest trails I've ever ridden. Just 100% rideable. 30 minutes of just pinning it. <laughs> you just go through like and just no grass and trees to rocks and then it turns into more dirt and then you get down into the tree line and then you go through different couple of different ecosystems as you go through the tree line and then you get back down to the bottom and you just look back up to the hill and you look at the giant mountain that you went down is there someone at the Same. base of the mo mountain to like help peel your hands off the handlebar when you're done <laughs> from the epic amount of arm pump that you have Oh man. All right. Paul, what what was your favorite milestone in your mountain biking career? Uh career. <laughs> uh I'd probably say um when I did two Enduro World Series races back to back. I don't think I'll ever do anything as hard as that. Because uh it wasn't it wasn't just um it wasn't just doing the two races in between um it was i did the irish one in 2015 and then i trucked on up to do the scotland one and on the the monday after the race there was this uh like bmc press camp going on and uh i wasn't involved in anything like in terms of like the journalistic stuff but like they i know them and they invited me over just to hang out in the house and i was like oh that's going to be perfect i can go and do nothing for three days before the next practice starts and then uh I got, I got there and paul aston who's one of the um tech editors got like insanely sick like it was ridiculous it just came on he actually had to have a lumbar puncture in hospital which if you don't know what one of those is is where you, oh. they, they take fluid out your spine that's right isn't it tony yeah mm. like it was no it was gnarly but um 
like great way to spend needed, the weekend. Yeah, someone, uh, someone needed to, well, there needed to be like pictures for the the first look article on on pink bike, and uh, I kind of went, well, fine out as long as it's quick and i'm just gonna do like go push up a trail go ride the bike and then come down and uh it wasn't that at all it was like a four hour ride or something with the the bmc enduro team and that was <laughs> insane like it was amazing trails and i was like oh this is so sick but i don't want to do this because i've got to go and ride from for like four or five days straight now i don't i don't want to do this i've just like done the same the week before so <laughs> and uh yeah well i i did it uh, and i didn't miss a single stage time i didn't i had some epic crash on in the scottish one like i <laughs> my friend my buddy chris was like um we were staying together and we we started to practice together and like before the first practice day i was pretty ruined and he was already hating me as it was I kind of went out, just went around so slow around the entire course, just like trying to conserve energy. And then uh, we got up to the stop that you kind of did the first two, the first two stages over here. And then the next two stages were over here for day one. And I remember I got up to the top uh, for the third one and I just went, do you know what? I cannot be bothered to do stage three. I'm just going to roll down <laughs> stage four and go home. Like, I'm just so tired. So I did that. So instead of the rest day, I actually went back and rode stage three and it was sick, but it was, it was pretty legit in terms of a trail and come race day. Like it started off with these amazing turns, like in the top and like you just came down and they were so fresh and had so much support and you just came down. It's like, oh, this is the best. And then it went into the woods and then it got like, that's when it got real. And I remember there's this one turn that's like 90 degrees. And I kind of rolled into it and I was looking ahead so much that I wasn't actually thinking about what I was doing. And I just went straight over the handlebars, slid down this huge bank for ages, still <laughs> clipped in upside down. I don't know if you've ever tried it upside down, but it's, it's pretty impossible. You were just like a tortoise on the side of the, uh, side oh, of the trail, time. basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then there was this marshal, this Scottish marshal. She must have been the only one there, well positioned. And she was like, oh, don't worry. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hold on. This is a race. If there's ever going to be a time where I'm not going to take my time, it's now. <laughs> and then, like, the worst thing was my, my buddy that was actually behind me in the race, like, passed me. And he finished so, he finished so badly. <laughs> and, I, and, like, I was, I, he was going so slow. And I knew he, him passing me was, like, the worst omen ever. And then I oh, just no. like, and then I just gave up like from there because like I, you couldn't even get back in to the race to like actually try and ride the trail. I just, I just gave up and just like went, oh, whatever. And then the next day they canceled two of the stages because they thought there was a storm coming in and that was the best news ever. And I had <laughs> You're like, that was I, it, the whole story for that news. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was the best. And the next day it was like the transition times were insane. Like you could almost, you could almost walk in between the transitions. It was ridiculous. Cause like the year before they had this like Whistler 2014 had like that huge controversy, right? About the trans the transition times and like how it was just insane to get there. So in for Scotland, they seemed to do the exact opposite and <laughs> made them so generous. Like I was pulling into like stage one, I think like Rene Wilderharbour was just about to set off just to like put into context, like how much gap there was. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling, so I'll stop. But yeah, that was e easily. That's going to be my. I forever. I think that's going to be my biggest achievement. I, I just can't help but like picture you like on the side of the trail with like your bike in the air, and and the lady just like take your time. It's okay, take and like team, people take, just whizzing past team. you, like that's what? A classic sideline comment. I feel like just someone crashes and people are shouting oh take your time or just encouraging them <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's okay you really can still nice. finish yeah i think it was like someone's mum right being really nice and thoughtful yeah be nice <laughs> oh, this guy. I'm like, oh poor thing and the, and the red mist is just carrying on and the rage is just going like this but yeah uh all right so unfortunately i don't have a story quite as good to follow up with that one but i'll, I'll try my best so my 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 favorite <laughs> mile milestone 
was uh, there is this uh, section on the Austin Green Belt. And the Austin Green Belt has everything from easy, flowy green trails to basically uh double diamonds almost well not double diamonds but black diamonds uh huge technical stuff and uh this unfortunately was not one of those black diamonds things there was this like exit on the uh green belt that i would basically i commuted for a while from my apartment uh to the office using the green belt it was awesome it was like i think it was like maybe like a five mile mile ride one way but it was great and it was fun to bomb down this one section where you got off the road and it was a trailhead but it was like this huge wide like big enough to fit like a truck in it and it was just filled with like rocks like that and they were jagged and awkwardly placed and going down it like i finally built up the uh the skill set to go down it but going up it was always such a pain because not only did you have this like crazy technical stuff, but the green belt is a multi-access trail. So you have hikers and dogs and kids running around. So you always have to check your speed and make sure you're not taking blind corners too rough. And so whenever I would get to that, like every time there was like these trees that would kind of block, like looking up at the trail. So I basically always had to take a dice roll am I going to be able to like carry speed around this corner or is someone walking down mm. and like almost every day there was always someone at round the corner and I never got a clearing shot at it. And I finally started like getting clean shots, but like it was so technical that I couldn't make it. And like, I would stall out. And a lot of the times I would get comments from people like the peanut gallery would chime in like, why don't you just walk your bike up? It's why are you riding a bike? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like what do you why you got two legs you can make this and um finally like just one day i finally just not only did i get a clean shot at it but there wasn't any hikers uh on that side so i could just pick my line and keep going up it and i just kept cranking and cranking and cranking and cranking and i got up to the top and i probably looked like an insane person just screaming just like standing at the top of this little it really wasn't even that big of a feature, but I was standing up at the top of this trailhead, just like, yes, I finally did it. Like three months I had been trying to get up this, this trailhead. And I was so relieved to finally do it. And that's still one of the proudest moments uh, because not only how technical it was, but just how much luck you had to have to have a clean shot at it. Yeah, there, that's a totally different factor than I, you know what I mean, you're used to. It's like, not only are you battling yourself, but you're like, is a hiker or someone going to be behind this to give me hell or hassle me? And it's just like, oh, it's all these things that have worked together. Oh <laughs> I've had to break checks for dogs, kids. Uh, I have like the loudest bell. I actually like Ryan, the Lone Ranger, I like flicked it uh, and it's like, it, it resonates at this certain frequency where it kind of like oscillates up and down and it literally feels like it's rattling your eardrums. Oh, it's God. that loud because you need something <laughs> that loud. And he just turned right. He's like, well, that was unpleasant. He's like, I'm going to have to do a lot of editing on this vid. <laughs> yeah. Although it's funny. Whenever I, I hit Bell my bottom bracket, minutes. what's that? Nice. What'd you say, Paul? Oh, I was just saying there'll be a comment like bell four minutes. Please <laughs> adjust audio. Nice. Yeah, no. Uh, so with with the, the continuation of our story, let's finish up with our favorite trips. And it doesn't have to be international. It can be uh, something that you drove out to. But uh, Zach, what was the your, your favorite mountain bike trip that you've gone on? Oh, easily the uh, trip I did over to Colorado um, and Wyoming over the summer. Uh, yeah, I mean, trip of a lifetime, really. Just uh, a couple weeks, me and my brother riding whatever the best trails we could find in Wyoming, Colorado. Uh, I, I, hard to beat. I don't think it gets much more epic than that. At, uh yeah, every day, just riding something new, something sick, um, all over the, Colorado and Wyoming. <laughs> what was the inspiration for that trip? Like, what made you and your brother like, 
Yeah, we need to make this happen this year. Um, I had signed up for the EWS in Aspen and figured that if we were going to drive all the way out there, we were going to do some riding while we were out there. So I kind of mapped out the best places to ride, and it it worked out so well. Just week before the race, we were in Wyoming riding in Jackson Hole. Some of the sickest trails I've ridden are out there on Teton Pass, and then raced, and then we had a little more time after the race to explore Colorado and uh, ride some more trails. We were almost going to do the Crested Butte BME, but I don't know. We just got we were too smoked by then, <laughs> and I had to get back for school. But oh, those darn yeah. adult responsibilities! Hey, Zach, Colorado, did you, <laughs> did you try that gnarly inside line that Sam Hill did on the corner in that race? No, no, <laughs> that was stage six. I mean, yeah. that was that was insane. I was standing right there watching him do that. Not too many oh, people no did it. Not too many people hit that line. I think I think Sam and maybe maybe one other person might have been the only people hurt people to do that inside line. Um, Jack and Jack. Yeah, he had a couple. Of, was it he had a couple of sneaky inside lines? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was faster, but uh, yeah, I don't think like you see help like himself. there was a there's definitely like a shot of Jesse Jesse Melamed for the Rocky Mountain team. He. Uh, he blew that corner apart, but he went around the outside. Yeah, but he was obviously like Sam Hill taking on the inside, like in the classic way. Yeah, like, no, he, he, he couldn't help himself. He just saw the inside line <laughs> sitting there. Yeah. And, like, I'm going to show he's these like, guys how to ride. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> Chompery 27. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Either Melamed or uh, Adrian Daly probably had the fastest through that turn right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, watching. That's another thing. You you gotta if you ever get the chance, you gotta go out and just watch some of the best riders. It'll just oh, yeah. it'll tear your mind apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I do have a can I hijack? I've got a no, go for it. rider story. So um, I was actually in the finish corral for Aaron Gwynn's chainless run in Leo Gang, and really? it was like, yeah, yeah. It was it was an insane experience because no one knew he'd broken his chain that was there. <laughs> so. I was I was like standing in like this area and I was standing next to Cuscus, who's the UR team manager. Uh, and he started off, there's like this Austrian commentator, right? Just to explain why no one knew. Like there's not Rob Warner or Claudio's commentary going on. And um, he like, he, he goes out the start gate and he just cased the first jump a little bit. And obviously the Austrian commentator is like, blah, 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 blah. like, no, unless you speak perfect German, like no idea what he's saying. And I turned around to Kuskas, I was like, I swear he's just cased that first jump. And we're like, oh, whatever, like, it's Aaron Gwynn, who cares? And then he comes <laughs> around the corner, and then obviously, like, the time's really close, and you're like, oh, whoa, like, he's going to beat Connor, like, maybe will he, won't he? And actually, Bernard Kerr was, like, moving out. Um, he was moving out from where the riders were to go and jump on Connor, because, like, Gwynn was down on him the whole time. And you could see him edging more and more and more. And then the time came up. And then I think he beat Connor by what, like 0. 0.09 or something insane like that. And then Bernard went, oh, oh. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> retreated back to where he was. But no one, still no one knew that Gwyn had broken his chain until like he picked up his bike and threw it down. And then one person saw him was like, no, like, no chain, what? Oh, and then like God. every everyone just lost their minds and it was insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like what watching a professional race and Whistler EWS is actually a really good one to go and watch because they all go up and down in the valley, so you can go around the middle one. So if you're gonna go and watch a race and you're over here, like that's that's a primo one to go and see. So Paul, since since you kind of have the floor, what was your favorite trip? We gotta start oh, landing this this bird here. So <laughs> favorite trip that's safe for uh, public speaking. <laughs> um I I'd probably say um the first time i went to the alps which is to go and do the mega avalanche uh like i'd never i'd stopped mountain biking for years and got into like darts and pool at university and got super fat and <laughs> it's like <laughs> and then i just kind of like i got i started working um working at dirt magazine and doing sales at factory media 
and uh and i got back with my old buddies and like going to digging trails again and um riding terribly and i was like got a man bike and then i woke up hung over one day watched earth three and there's that mega avalanche segment in there and uh, i just texted my buddy dom and i was like well should we all do this this year and then we did and uh yeah we all drove down we went to like um port de soleil where lay share and morsey and off the first time and then went over to there and uh yeah it was that was that was the thing that kind of kicked it off really like all the traveling and stuff so uh that was probably my favorite crazy awesome yeah the thing that broke the seal they got you they got the uh the fire lit oh my gosh yeah. so tony what's your favorite trip favorite trip well i've only been doing this for about a year and a half like i said so <laughs> um i did just finally go on a trip but it will be one of the most memorable trips for me because you know it's there's something to be said about the first you know so um basically always remember uh, your first yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i uh yeah i remember uh so this guy reached out to me um he's he was a former uh uh, Navy, he's in, no, he was in the Air Force. Oh my gosh, I hope he's not watching this. He's gonna kill me if I don't. I'm just on the spot. Now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm he's never gonna talk to me again. Um, but anyway, he's a for, former veteran, and um, he basically uh, he reached out to me and he was like, Hey, you know, we started hanging out, he wanted to ride and everything, a really good guy. And I started riding with him and his veteran buddies, and uh, he invited me to go on a trip to uh, Palm Springs to like commemorate his you know retirement. and. Um, I was like, wow, okay, cool, you know, and uh, he, you know, he says, I'll just, me and my buddy are going to get a hotel room, and I basically took the couch, and I'm thinking, like, small couch, and I get there, this couch is, like, monstrous, I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is awesome, but I mean, um, just, it was the first time I actually, because I've been so busy with school, working, I have, like, three or four jobs that I currently have, and just to get away for a weekend, and to just go out and ride, and thinking to myself, I don't have to go home, I don't have to deal with issues with like you know my wife i don't have to deal with issues with like you know not that my wife is an issue but just that um you know what i mean there's stuff you have to do your wife you know might have a list for you to do honeydews you know i didn't have to think about any of that you know you, my kid you know it was just like i just got to go hang out with some people and just think about mountain bike riding and we just talked about mountain bike parts those whole two days <laughs> we talked about oh look at this look at my new hope brakes oh look at this oh i'm thinking about what, doing this to my bike and i'm just sitting there i'm like it's just zoning myself out and just that first ride that day was just we were trying to get to murray hill and we ended up didn't realize there was so much climbing that one of the guys we were with was like dude i don't want to waste myself we just got to murray hill and he's like dead and i was like let's go let's go you know but you know, I did, it was all about him and, you know, I wanted to make sure we had a good day because we're going to do Palm Canyon Epic the next day. But that day, uh, it was just, it was, it was just, it was just nice to just have all the stresses lifted, you know, and just to experience that and uh, to be able to just have like the people around you who are like-minded and the next day we did Palm Canyon Epic and almost died. So we literally got down in the dark. It was bad. We got lost. It was crazy. So I'll... I'll say that it was one of the most fun and more adventure trips because that's what it was. It was an adventure, you know. <laughs> so it was oh a good time. Gosh. Do you get, do you get, Tony? Do you get the opportunity to go out on a lot of trips? Like you're, you're. I can't even imagine what sort of responsibilities you have. So, like, do you get to do a lot each year? Or um, honestly, um, right now, I, I don't really it's I'm, I earned because the channel has gotten to a certain point. My wife is like seeing like, Oh wait, this isn't just a hobby. This is actually turning into something, you know? So she's kind of opening up into giving me more leeway. So, um, I pitched to her that I'm, um, maybe do a five day trip up to NorCal and then down to Santa Cruz, um, maybe at the end of February. So I might get to do that. And I really want to go mountain bike in Israel. No, not too many people have gone to Israel. So, yeah. and I've always wanted to go and I want to go there. So hopefully somehow this year, I'm going to try to make that happen. So to answer your question, I don't get many opportunities, but I'm trying to make it happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, it's just kind of where I'm at with that. Well, if you ever, if you ever want to come check out my neck of the woods, there's, there's a space for you. Oh, well, th dude, thank you so Anyone much. I really appreciate yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, oh. Israel, everyone seems to be talking about Israel riding lately. Like, really? The, the tourism board must be like doing a bunch of stuff. <laughs> is there like, is there like a, uh, like I'll have to like 
look it up now. There are like some really awesome hidden gems over there that like no one's touched uh, yet. I've talked to people who are like, for some reason, some people from Israel follow my channel. And one of the guys who has been really consistent with like commenting on my channel for like the longest time. And he constantly tells me, you got to come out here and ride. It's, it's really awesome. You know, and he's, he's constantly talking it up and I did look at it and there is a mountain bike scene and, um, it's, um, and you know, and I really thought about all the different places in Israel, I'm like, that place has to be awesome. You know, it just, it's, 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 uh, it's got a lot out there. The terrain is, you know, varies a lot depending on where you're at in such a small place from what I understand. Yeah. So it's got to be pretty cool and I'm hoping to get my butt out there. So, yeah, there is, uh, this, uh, this, I actually had this conversation with someone this year. There is a whole region on trail forks for Israel and you'd be really? amazed. Like, I mean, oh, actually, I don't know if I can, maybe I can add it up. It looks like there's like 600 trails in Israel on listed on trail forks which is like if you ask man in the, if you ask man or woman in the street that they never they never wow. say that number but yeah I and the fact that they're listed too yeah, you know yeah. what i tried I to think... post the link in but i guess there's you got to maybe a moderator or something to share a link oh yeah we, uh, we, we yeah. can't trust you paul you're you're gonna, you're gonna be up to no good in the chat <laughs> oh i'm gonna spam the shit out of this yeah yeah <laughs> and there goes our pg rating well well done <laughs> oh we were almost there we were almost, we were there. almost we almost made it Oh my um, gosh. One of the things, though, about Israel that I, I don't want to say I'm concerned about, I know a lot of people from Israel and know a lot of the politics out there. And I do know there is a lot of places, like, or not a lot of places, but I do know that there is places in Israel where you can stand on that mountain and you can see, like, ISIS camping outside. So it's kind of eerie if you think about it. So mm -hmm. I wonder if that's what's kind of turned some people off. But, you know, um, the fact of the matter is, Israel's a pretty much a first world country and they, you know, they're really, for the most part, pretty protected. So. But I mean, yeah, it is kind of eerie if you think about it, which may deter some people from wanting to go out there. So that might be the other reason why we haven't, oh, yeah. you know, journeyed there. I don't know. Wow. So I mean, in the UK, it was a big, it was like, you know, this huge wow. news, like that whole situation. But I'll, I won't get into it because it's <laughs> mad like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, 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 let's stay on brand. All right. So uh, for me, I've only gone on one real mountain biking trip and it was to Bellingham. And I have oh, to that say that so nice. oh, yeah. such a roller coaster. I didn't like, so uh, if a little bit of background, my good buddy, Paul, he and I grew up in New Hampshire. We have known each other since we were like, like 11, 12. And we still to this day talk and I'm 32. So that, that gives you an idea of our, our friendship. Uh, I have a bunch of friends too, back in New Hampshire, Jeff and all them, but, uh, Paul moved up to Bellingham and Paul is, uh, he's a photographer. He was in the Navy as a photographer. And to the point he moved up to Bellingham because he, he got in mountain biking when he was in Japan. And, uh, he went out to Bellingham to be out there. And he's like, dude, you gotta check this out. Cause he saw that I was getting really big into mountain biking. I, I had bought the Yeti at that time, but I didn't have a bag to travel with, but he knew the guys at the Kona shop and he's just like, yeah, I can, I can get you a bike. Don't worry about it. And so we plan the trip and we get out there and I'm like, I'm watching videos and I'm kind of like, okay, I think I can handle this. This doesn't look that bad, but here's the thing. Um, in Austin, there's no ascent to get to the trail. <laughs> like you just start the trail. You just, you just go, you're there, you're done. Go have fun. Uh, in Bellingham, you know, and anywhere else where there's actual elevation <laughs> that isn't measured in the tens of feet, um, you uh you have to you have to climb up there and uh in my video uh that i made off that bellingham trip like the very first day on the very first trail i made it exactly like 200 feet before i fell off a switchback going up a hill i had i was just not prepared at all i would i would have loved to have blamed it on the bike because i was on a process 111 uh so, you know, obviously the bike was, was in, in, in poor configuration for me to be able to ride in Bellingham, but I just completely ate it and almost fell down the side of this hill and the whole way I'm just sucking wind. But even though like it just brutally murdered me the whole way through, just 
the amazing amount of trails and then Bellingham itself, like everyone there has mountain bikes. You, you, you see every car with a mountain bike rack on it. And like, there's bikes outside. Everything has a bike theme. Uh, it was such an amazing trip. And then on top of that, my buddy, Paul, like showed me around and, you know, being a photographer, he knows all the sickest spots to like get, get sweet footage and shots. And we just explored the state and I am going to go back this year for redemption on that hill. I'm going to bring my Yeti. So I'm prepared. It's like, no, I'm going to climb you. Uh, hopefully I'll meet some other guys up there, but I, maybe even get up to Whistler. Uh, and I'll probably, I might plan a trip to, to BC, but we'll see. Do it. But all right. Yeah, you should. So we, we are pretty much up on time. It has been uh, fantastic talking with you guys. So uh, let, let's go around the room. Uh, Zach, do you, do you have any, any, last, any last thoughts uh, to share to the people out there in the mountain bike community? What, what would you encourage them to do to form their own memories? Go ride new trails. Um, I think that's one of the reasons I started making YouTube ch or started the YouTube channel was to encourage people to go ride new stuff. I think people kind of get caught in a rut riding their riding what they're comfortable with, and I think you should try to get out and explore more. Outstanding, Tony. How about yourself? What, what would be your passing uh, knowledge to them? To um, in the sense of like encouraging people to get out type of thing yeah create your create your own mountain bike memories oh creating oh i just think on it i just encourage people if you want to create good memories it's just uh a firm believer in family and friends you know what i mean and actually getting out and away from your cell phone and stuff like that you know like being in the mental health field like i know how damaging uh you know the you know you're being in front of screens all the time it really messes with your neural connections and it becomes like an addiction and you see people you see people every day out to get out to dinner like this you know and i think one of the cool things i see about people when they're out together with friends and family riding together they are just they're 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 looking at each other they're having real life experiences and i feel like we're so not doing that anymore. So I just encourage you to get out with the people you love and the people you like to hang out with and just get out and do it. I don't care what trail it is. I don't care where it's at. Just get out and do it. And, um, you know, you're going to have an amazing time, you know? Outstanding. So, yeah. Outstanding. Uh, Paul, what, what bit of uh, sage advice do you have? Uh, I would, I would ask, uh, I would urge people to ask themselves, uh, what's actually holding you back? So, I mean, for people like, you know, like Tony here, like, like he, he, like he the answer is pretty obvious, like <laughs> a pretty demanding uh, lifestyle away from mountain biking. But, you know, there are so many people that just kind of go, oh, I would love to do this. I would absolutely love to do this. <laughs> but it's kind of like, yeah, and like, why not go and do it? Like a few, I would say that every major turning point in my life is where I made a big decision and just went for it. Like when I, I think I wouldn't literally be here now in Squamish in, in this house that I, I own uh, because um, in 20, crap, 2013, I, I quit my job in London and just said, I'm going to take a year off and go and work in a bike park in New Zealand and then go to Whistler. <laughs> and I did it. And some people were like, oh, you're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. And I'm just like, well, there was nothing holding me back. Like there was, there was literally nothing. So yeah. um, I would always say, you know, unless you're in accentuating circumstances, like go and do the thing that you actually want to do, not <laughs> and not kind of come up with random excuses that don't actually hold any merit. So yeah, outstanding. Uh, and to to just uh, follow up with that, you know, when. I grew up with mountain biking and then got out of it. And unfortunately it took a major, uh, injury for me to get back into it. But you know, for me, I, I sat there and I was watching all these videos of people doing these amazing things. And I just sat there and I started having a pity party. And then I realized like, you know what, I'm just not going to let this be my life. I'm not going to sit here and watch someone else live their life and then let mine just pass me by. And you know, there were days where I, I felt it, but I just, I just got on the bike and I just started riding and 
I started small, oh so small. Um, I mean, we're talking like flat level ground small. And I worked it up to the point now where I bombed down the hill of life, one of the chunkiest, gnarliest things that we have here in Austin with the Lone Ranger. And it was covered in ice, <laughs> which may have caused me to get another injury. But, you know, you, yes, exactly. You know, life is short. Get out there and ride, as someone so eloquently put it in the comments. And with that positive message, folks, we are going to have to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And if you are listening to this after the fact, thank you for uh, spending your day with us, your drive, your afternoon, your lunch hour. Uh, next week, we are actually going to have a pretty awesome show. February 4th uh, from 1 to 2 Pacific Standard Time. The pregame show drinking game. Uh, that's actually going to be on Biker's channel. And he's got an amazing lineup. He's got Bobo, Biking with Bobo, Daily MTB Rider, and JC Trails. I'm not going to miss it, and nor should you. But until next time, everyone, have a good night. <laughs>